Scripting and hacking. Since the start of the game, there have always been people who've tried to cheat and exploit the system for an advantage. In the beginning, League of Legends was never really meant to be a top-selling game. It wasn't released by any big-name companies at the time, and Riot Games, for its entire lifespan, has pretty much only been really known for League of Legends. In terms of technology, League is built off of very old shit. Due to the enormous number of technical problems, Riot Games has basically had to build themselves up from scratch while they were getting more and more popular. League is still by far the most popular multiplayer game in the world. With the number of people trying to exploit it, with the number of hackers out there, and with this shitty old outdated technology, there have been some absolutely hilarious and downright game-breaking stuff in League of Legends. In this video, we will be talking to some of the most prolific exploiters and scripters in the current community, most of whom have chosen to remain anonymous for obvious reasons. From scripters to DDoSers, and of course, Riot's infamously shitty client, we will be exploring the world of hackers and their relationship to our community. This is League of Documentary. This video is sponsored by Buff.gg. Buff.gg is an authorized Overwolf app that allows you to earn points every time you play one of your favorite games. You can take these points and redeem them in their shop for free RP, gift cards, and even awesome gaming hardware such as keyboards or headphones. All you have to do is open up Buff and let it run in the background while you're in-game and you'll get free credits just for playing any of the games that you love. There are tons of different games that you can earn points on, from Valorant to PUBG and, of course, League of Legends. Buff has a ton of variety and different games to choose from when earning points. Buff is completely free to download and you can try it today with my link in the description. When talking about hacking in video games, for people that are not familiar with the world of coding, they don't really understand the differences between the methods of exploitation in the community. When it comes to league exploits, there are two main kinds of hackers, people who make scripts and people who exploit the client. Scripting is the most widely known form of cheating in any video game. It's the most common, it's the cheapest, and of course, it is the most easily recognizable. When it comes to kiting scripts or dodging scripts, whatever the case may be, these things look extremely questionable on screen and have obvious mechanical abilities that only computers can have. These types of scripts are not developed by one person though. These scripts not only have to work perfectly in each and every game, but they have to remain undetectable by Riot and updated with each patch of League of Legends. It takes several people's worth of work in order to be able to create a functional script that you can sell on the marketplace. I was able to talk to the team that created one of the most prolific scripting platforms on the market today. My name is Sleep. I'm a script developer. Basically, the motto of the script is uh, remaining undetected. We've been undetected for two years so far. If you Google League of Legends script, we're like rank one. Okay, so basically I, I quit high school when I was 16. Never really finished courses or like university or anything. I just went straight home, teach myself basically how to do small things like uh, SEO, like search engine optimization and some programming as well. Yeah, okay. Let's just say you're, you're getting you're getting altered by a virus. Immediately, when the virus ult gets cast, virus is at that position and he's casting visibility right now and it's going into that direction so immediately it will move your character like the opposite direction just just to dodge yeah you, you will immediately see okay this guy is scripting scripting seraph very uh, very popular based on the enemy positions can basically calculate where he's probably going to be in the next second those are internal scripts memory reading and writing external scripts which only do memory reading instead of telling the game, okay, cast this ability in this direction. It will instead use your mouse. It will move your mouse pointer to, to the enemy instead and simulate mouse clicks and button presses to avoid detection by the game. It's not as fast to move your mouse as telling the game, okay, cast in this direction. Internal scripts and stuff that could get you banned or most likely to get you banned have way better features like dodging abilities, hitting your own abilities, map awareness. So if you're using public cheats or scripts, most likely already in the League of Legends database. Uh, blacklist, yeah. Blacklist, yeah, blacklist, blacklist basically. Blacklist. Basically, the way that Riot determines whether or not you're scripting is based on how you input commands into the game. Pro players have the fastest reaction speeds in the game, but compared to a scripts, even their inputs look like an 80-year-old paraplegics. 
What many scripters do these days in order to avoid getting banned is pixel detection. Instead of taking information from League of Legends code, it looks at the screen and processes that information instead. This method, however, is a lot slower, harder to do, and provides less cheating features overall. Script makers essentially tone down many of the features that they have in order to avoid detection. If you're super obvious about your scripting, like with Xerath scripts, you're probably going to rack up a bunch of reports really fast and be marked as a scripter by Riot. Instead, what most scripters do in their programs is provide features that are not as obvious. Things like drawing abilities, auto-smiting, range indicators, and auto-cleanse. Although this isn't quite as frustrating as a Xerath that hits every single one of his skill shots, it does make a big difference in clutch situations. But here's the thing. There are still memory reading scripts out there. People have been able to get past Riot's anti-cheat systems and figure out a way to have top tier scripting in their games. So why don't we see these types of scripts more often in game? Why aren't they readily available? It's because these types of scripts are very hard to find and very hard to purchase. In order to understand why it's hard to find these scripts, we have to understand Riot's anti-cheat team. Like any department in any big company, they will spend their time on what will get the most value for their resources. Instead of focusing on fixing every single little bug or patch, they will direct most of their attention and focus on the ones that are extremely public and the ones that are most likely to break the game. League of Legends does it really care about fixing the bugs until they become an issue. Vandral definitely uh, has uh, a lot of impact in getting those exploits getting patched because uh, those usually stay underground and exploited by certain people until they get leaked. Yeah. If a memory reading script that was undetectable by Riot became publicly available, it would blow up in popularity overnight and Riot would be forced to fix the issue. So these high tier scripters do something different instead. Rather than publicly selling their scripts, they make closed Discord communities to sell to a smaller number of people. Since these scripts are not only the highest quality on the market, very few people actually have access to them. So not only are they providing something high-end, they are also providing something that's rare. Which means these guys can charge up to thousands of dollars per month to be able to use their scripts. But it's not just the price that keeps people away. In order to get into these Discord servers, you need to have someone to vouch for you and invite you to them. But before you can even get approval to view what's inside these communities, you need to have proof that you are a person who is an active scripter. How do you do that? Well, a person does not become a drug addict overnight. You start by trying the soft stuff and work your way up to the harder stuff. People who seek out top tier memory scripts tend to be some very hard users. And they always have a history of using other types of scripts beforehand. Not only do you need to provide them with the names of all the past scripts that you've used, you need to show PayPal receipts for purchases on these scripts, and vouches from the developers of these scripts to confirm the legitimacy of your payments. But it doesn't stop there. After verifying all of your payments, you then need to provide a piece of personal ID such as a driver's license or a passport in order to verify your identity. That's right, you have to provide government-issued documents just to be able to hit more Xerath queues. Once all that is said and done, the scripters will still sometimes send you a dummy copy to see if you try to unpack or reverse engineer their script. They do all of these fail states just to stay out of reach of Riot Games. So why would anyone go through all this trouble just to get a script? Another way of making money is basically boosting accounts to high ranks and selling them afterwards. So what they do is uh, they buy a script for like 300 and then work, work for a, a boosting platform or uh, sell even accounts that they script it on. Depending on the quality of the script and how many monthly users there are, scripters can make between 10 to 60,000 US dollars a month. You might think this is overkill and you might think all this extra security is a big hassle, but when you hear how involved Riot Games is actually in these communities, the measures that these guys take might not seem so ridiculous. The amount of people who are scripting has 
decreased over the years. You know, it hasn't like drastically decreased. It's just like a slow decrease, I would say. So basically on ban waves, Riot won't say, okay, guys, we noticed uh, this third party program a lot. We will punish you for that exact program. They won't say anything. Uh, today I want to play League and suddenly uh, you'll see a message on the screen saying you're permanently banned. You have no idea which program it was. You have no idea when that was. It could have been a few months ago. You tried out that uh, skin changer that was publicly uh, available on that website. And the funny thing is, even if you only use that on one account, the account might not have been even banned, but the other accounts that you use on that PC. Basically just really random, just to confuse script developers. So, so we can't pinpoint what exactly happened and why. It's pretty smart, to, to be honest. There's a few reasons that Riot doesn't just automatically ban every single scripter as soon as they detect them. The first most obvious reason is to gather data about scripters and what their behaviors are like. If they're caught using one script, it's a safe assumption that they could be using more. But one of the most interesting reasons that they don't automatically do this is to cause drama in the scripting community. Script developers are fairly close. Everyone knows each other and everyone has probably heard of each other. Each of the major scripting communities have their own discords which provide scripts and other services to their customers and many of those customers will purchase more than one script. So there's a lot of overlap and a lot of interactions between these communities. So if one customer has five different scripts from five different devs, when he gets hit by a ban wave, he will go and blame all of them. This kind of harassment from the consumers creates tension between the scripters. They're all very proud of their own work and can get a little bit territorial about whose script actually got picked up by the system. No one wants to take the blame and no one wants to admit fault. And sometimes they can even devolve into full-blown arguments. My scripts didn't get detected, you're the shitty coder. Your JavaScripts look like Jabba the Hutt. Oh yeah, well your C++ scripts are so bad, they call it D++. These ban waves aren't just to remove cheaters from the game, they're also to make it so that the scripters are less likely to work together on figuring out exactly whose code got detected. Instead of working together, admitting faults, and figuring out exactly which programs are safe and which programs are not safe, the scripters end up working on top of each other, double checking everything to make sure that things are okay. This type of rivalry also ensures that any major exploits that could break the game don't get used by a large number of people all at once. There have been consumers saying, I got banned on my main account, I paid so much on this account, I had all the skins, I was level 500 and I got banned because of you guys, because I used you. I got threatened, I got <laughs> life threatened, someone, I mean, I got called the dog, a bald, a, a midget. By some, by some people who got banned before. A lot of them just put a lot of money into the game and at some points they forget that when they register to buy a script we are not responsible for any changes that might ha uh, happen to League or if they manually flag their own account if they are being obvious. They kind of just forget that we are not responsible for what happens we only distribute our software and they choose to either buy it or not. They choose to use it or not. We gave them the software, they used it on their own uh, accords. Many developers on Riot's anti-cheat team are actually ex-hackers themselves. Many of these rioters actually go into these hacking discords and infiltrate their communities to see if they can find better ways to deal with their scripts. This type of practice is not uncommon in the industry. Not only do they infiltrate these communities, they'll also talk to and even hang out with these hackers. They'll go into a community, tell everyone straight up that they're a rider, verify their identity, and then offer to play a game of League of Legends together. Essentially, they'll become friends with a lot of the people that they're supposed to be policing. They play Clash together, they offer up RP rewards for tips on bug fixes. The reason that Riot doesn't immediately take down every single Discord community they come across is because they're very useful. Instead of hiring a bunch of coders to find bugs in your game, if you allow these types of hacking communities to exist, they'll eventually find them for you. Now, some people might think that rioters shouldn't be making friends with the hackers that are trying to exploit the game, but there's actually a lot of advantages to having this friendly relationship. Let's say there's an exploit that allows you to use the ARAM Skin Boosters button for free. No RP, no cost, 
and doable every single game. You make a program for it and you make a subscription service that sells it to people for $1 a month. Even if you have a thousand users, you're only making a thousand bucks a month. It's not a ton of money and Riot's not really losing much from this exploit. So the rioters might say to the hackers, hey, we're aware of this exploit, but we're not going to take it down just yet. It doesn't really threaten the game, and most people are pretty happy with it anyway. So Riot just allows this type of exploit to exist in the community for a very long time. In fact, this exploit was in the community for three years before they patched it. But when a big exploit comes into the game, like say, 1 million AP Viego, these rioters can now go to their friends in the hacking community, ask them all sorts of questions about how this exploit works, and quickly obtain valuable information on how to patch it. Even if the hackers themselves don't know how the exploit works, they can at least point them in the right direction. When the rioters are friends with the hackers, it's a lot easier to ask for favors. Hey, remember when I did you that solid and I didn't patch that ARAM thing for years? Well, this new Viego bug could make me lose my job if I don't get it patched fast, so uh, could you help a friend out? When the community finds small bugs that they can make a little bit of money off of, Riot will often look the other way or delay patching something for a very long time. But in return, they expect help when the real big game-breaking stuff hits the servers. It's an unspoken understanding between cheaters and the people policing them. You let them get away with a few little things so that you can keep the overall peace in your server. I know about one line of code. When you unpack the leak client, it's the first thing that like, shows up that, that comes to your attention. That says something like, if you read this, contact us for a job interview or so something like that. Just to try and maybe get them on another path than scripting or making scripts. One of the biggest stains on Riot's reputation over the years has been their shitty client. You guys made fun of me when I said that League of Legends had by far of all games out there all of them, the worst clients of any game. Uh, it is an embarrassment to video games themselves that somebody with billions of dollars still runs on a spaghetti code dog shit piece of trash. Mid. Lost to monkey kick. I lost said. To monkey kick. Lost. Mid. To monkey kick. Lost. To hey. Monkey kick. Lost. Riot. To monkey kick. Lost. Incidences like this are not uncommon. Riot's client is essentially a meme for how unstable it can be. Yes, the client is very bad, but it's actually not quite as bad as you think it is. All of these clips from different streamers getting kicked or having their screen frozen or parts of their game just not working, these are not really due to bugs in the client, but rather holes in the client and hackers exploiting it. If you start a custom game and tab out to look at your client, it will normally show you this. Basically, the client recognizes that you're in a game and doesn't let you do anything else. But some exploiters were able to figure out how to take this gray screen and turn it back into the home screen. Okay, so you can go from no screen to home screen. Why does that matter for the client? Because when you're already in a game, you cannot start another. By using this trick, people figured out that if you go into a rank queue, get into a lobby, and if you have a team composition or a player you don't want on your team, you could just simply stay in the custom game. Because you are already in a game, the system does not allow you to start another game. And so all 10 players in this ranked lobby cannot start the game until that one person leaves the custom game. They can just hold every single other person in the lobby hostage until somebody else decides to dodge. There have been numerous exploits like this throughout League's history. From spamming people with friend requests to abusing the patch system, there are a lot of different ways that you can just fuck up champion select and make it so that people cannot start their games. And of course, when something is able to cause chaos, people will naturally use it to troll big name streamers. Some exploiters actually provided hourly rates to prevent certain streamers from allowing them to go into games. Depending on which streamer and how many views they have, you could pay as little as 50 bucks to make sure that this streamer cannot start a game of League of Legends. And these trolls would just sit back and enjoy the rage. Fuck, the queue just popped on its- What the fuck happened to my queue? It literally just popped, I didn't decline you dipshit. Oh my fucking god, the server! It's so annoying, man! Like, I'm losing my mind. I cannot keep waiting 30 minutes per game just so the client can bug! Such a dog shit fucking server! Among the dozens of different exploiters that I interviewed, one thing that they would all unanimously agree on 
was the fact that the Riot client was one of the biggest pieces of shit that they have ever worked on in their entire lives. But why exactly is the client so bad? It mainly has to do with the history of League of Legends. If you think of League's client like a house, the house was built 10 years ago by amateurs. Riot Games had nowhere near the amount of expertise or manpower it does today. When it was started, it was just made by a small team of developers who had a little bit of passion for making video games. Not only was it made by amateurs, it was made using technology that's over 10 years old. So essentially, when it was built, this house was built out of straw. It's not really even a house, it's more of a shitty hut. And inside Riot's shitty hut is filled with game assets. Things like champion sound files, skins, champion abilities, how much damage everything does. These are the kinds of things that exploiters would love to have in their hands. And while hackers in other games do still get their hands on these types of files, other companies have better security systems in place. Their houses have alarms and steel doors. While these guys can still break in, they're gonna have to work for it. Most other gaming companies have been making video games far longer than Riot has. These other companies also tend to have more than one game that they focus on. Up until very recently, Riot has only really produced League of Legends. These other companies can update and create new clients as technology progresses. But in the case of League of Legends, instead of completely destroying the client, they've essentially just built things on top of it. There have been some major revamps to the clients over the years, but the foundation is still made out of straw. And since it's a straw house, there are certain parts of it that are still very vulnerable and easy to access. With so many back doors in this house, you can do a ton of different things, from redesigning the appearance of the home screen, to giving yourself infinite RP and skins, to even unbanning accounts that have been banned for cheating and scripting. One of the most ridiculous ranked exploits that was discovered recently came because of a client bug. People would have match histories that looked something like this. Now, there were several different theories as to how people were accomplishing this. Vandral reported this as a custom games exploit. According to my sources, what the hackers would do is, first, exploit a backdoor in the client that would revert their patch in the game. When you log into League of Legends, the first thing the client does is check for updates. If you're on an older patch, it automatically downloads and installs the new patch. But these guys were able to update and put themselves on the previous patch. Why is that important? When you queue up for a ranked game, the system looks for other players that are also queued up on the same patch. Which means that if you're in queue for a ranked game on patch 10.1, but everybody else is on patch 10.2, you're going to be the only person in the entire server looking for a ranked game on that patch. So all you have to do is take nine other accounts of similar ELO, queue up together, and you're 100% guaranteed to find a ranked game together. Once you do that, you can just farm a bunch of ranked games on some accounts, turn regular accounts into a master tier account, and sell them on the black market. The best part for these Descriptors is, the whole process can be automated with bots. You're just going to be sitting back and printing money. Client exploits are far more destructive for the game, which is why many of them are private and kept to a very small number of people when discovered. Back in early 2021, Riot publicly stated that they would be making a bigger effort to fix the issues in the client. But according to most exploiters, it is still very easy to find these types of backdoors. And while there's no real way to completely stop these types of exploits, Riot has been making a more concentrated effort on banning and rooting out more of these communities. Depending on which country you live in, Riot is also willing to take you to court to sue you for damages caused to their game. The most prolific example of Riot cracking down on cheaters is when one of the biggest scripting websites called League Sharp was sued by Riot in order to pay $10 million in damages. The website itself was not generating anywhere near that amount of money, but an example and a precedent was set. That was mainly to example, like yeah, a statement. But, uh, no, they did it to like scare off others. Yeah, exactly. Like uh, a statement. And uh, I'm pretty sure it worked. Like a lot of people quit. A lot of people I know quit. So it seems that Riot's strategy for dealing with a lot of these issues is to just file a new lawsuit rather than make a new client. Scripting and exploits have evolved over the years. For the most part, it's become a lot harder to cheat in League of Legends compared to previous years. A lot of the things that used to be possible just aren't doable anymore. Back in the early days, people would be DDoSing each other in-game. This was thanks to the shitty security of Skype, the main gaming communication platform before Discord. People would just search your name into Skype, find your IP address, and then send so much traffic to your area that you would just not be able to play the game anymore. 
Many of these older methods of cheating no longer work, but that doesn't mean new ones won't appear. The scripts changed, improved in quality over the years. They were way buggier and just using way more PC resources. Riot develops a better anti-cheat, they'll develop better cheat. If they patch something, they'll find a new way. It's constant uh, arms race yeah. against cheaters, against the uh, game developers. Will there ever be an end to cheating and exploits? Conventional wisdom says no. There's too many things can go wrong, and mistakes are a natural part of progression. Riot comes out with a new patch every two weeks, but according to major scripters, the end of scripting is about to come. Armageddon is coming soon, and that Armageddon's name is Riot Vanguard. The, no, there is a new enter cheat coming soon. They announced it like one year ago, and they still haven't published it, but uh, it's basically Vanguard which is for Valorant, but it's going to be for League. That'll probably eliminate most of the memory reading scripts. I would confidently say at least 90% of all platforms will get immediately detected and every user of those would get banned immediately. Yeah. Yep. Once Vanguard uh, runs out, which is some of the developers, they would like be hit so hard that they just wouldn't have the uh, will to recover, basically. Like people have people have undetected Valorant cheats right now, although they're hard to find. But it it's possible. Yeah. There will always be a way to bypass it. Also, um, prices of those scripts that would stay we'll... undetected or find ways we'll to stay. Higher. Yeah, they will skyrocket. Yeah, the, I mean, the prices yeah. will skyrocket. Most skyrocket. developers will just basically give up. It would be way smaller, basically. W most of them would just like disappear, and then it would be just like a dogfight between the ones that are completely private and undetected, and the ones that are uh, public and undetected. When Vanguard wipes out the majority of scripters from being profitable, that should eliminate most forms of cheating, right? Well, not really. Here's the thing about exploiters and scripters. A lot of them, they didn't start getting into this because of the promise of profit. The majority of people in the community are not seasoned coders doing this professionally. They tend to just be kids in college. Coders are one of the most in-demand professions in the world. They can easily find work in other top positions that pay far more than even the more profitable scripts. People who mess around with these cheats are just people getting their feet wet with computer science who also happen to play League and want to mess around with the code. The way that many of the exploits that I've discussed in this video are not found because of some malicious intent to destroy Riot Games, it's just a bunch of kids playing scientist and experimenting with the code, trying to see if they can apply what they've learned in class to affect the real world. Because for us, this is basically just like, we do it for fun, but we provide customers with like professional experience if they want to have it. A lot of people take scripting for professionally, you do it uh, to sell accounts, you do it to boost, etc. But a lot of people just do it for fun. Like people overestimate what it is to be a scripter, really. So when a game-breaking exploit hits the servers, it's not because some kid decided to go fuck Riot Games. Their intention was more like, what would happen if I fucked with Riot Games? 